Today, we're going to compare two absolutely fascinating Guardian breeds, the Rhodesian Ridgeback and the Connie Corso. Let's see where they're similar, let's see where they're different, and ultimately, let's see which one might be a perfect fit for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Ridgeback Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist, and I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the amazing Ridgeback, then how you can become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Ridgeback companions. So if you love the Rhodesian Ridgeback as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future video. Now then, let's dive into today's video and we'll compare two of the best garden breeds in the world and what it is that you might want to consider when trying to choose between the two. So let's start with their origins, which are quite different. The Connie Corso originates from the Roman Empire as war dogs and ended up in Italy where they have been herding, guarding and protecting ever since. Now the Rhodesian Ridgeback is a mix of a multitude of breeds from both Europe and Africa and ended up being a glorious hunting dog that was also used for guarding and protection. Now, despite that they are both considered Mastiffs, they don't look much alike. Both breeds are quite large, but the Rhodesian Ridgeback is leaner and lighter than the Connie Corso, who looks much more like the typical Mastiff. The Ridgeback has a longer nose and floppy ears, whereas the Connie Corso has a shorter nose, and depending on where in the world he is, his ears are cropped. Now, some places like here in the UK, that is completely illegal. Now, his natural ears are floppy. Now, the Rhodesian Ridgeback has that ridge running down the back, which is a trademark of the breed. Colour-wise, the Ridgeback comes in a single colour, which is wheat, while the Connie Corso can be found in black, grey, brindle, fawn and red. Now, let's face it, their looks is the least interesting thing about these dogs, and none of them can be considered a good choice for first-time owners, and I'm really going to explain to you why. Sorry to very quickly interrupt the video guys, I just wanted to let you know if you haven't done it already, over on our website FenrirCanineLeaders.com we have a completely free quiz that I designed myself for you to be able to take. It asks you a few questions based on some of the things that I think are really important for what guard dog breed will be perfect for you. So you go through that quiz, you answer the questions honestly and then at the end it will give you what I think the perfect guard dog breed for you is. And again, it's completely free, just trying to help you guys out as much as we can so again there'll be a link down to it in the description box below if you haven't done it already go even if you're not necessarily interested in getting a guard dog breed anytime soon i know a lot of people have found it really fun just to see what kind of breed i would recommend for you so get stuck in go and have a look but without further ado we'll get back to the video you were just watching both of these breeds, both the Connie Corso and the Rhodesian Ridgeback, were bred for roles that required very minimal input from their owners. They were bred to be able to make decisions for themselves rather than to look to their handler for guidance and direction. What that means is it makes them a very independent breed, which some people might call very stubborn. What that means for first-time owners is it can be an extreme challenge to get them focused, to get them reliable, and to get them looking to you for guidance and direction in all circumstances and situations, which here at Fenrir, as part of our training theories and methodology, is one of the most important things that you can achieve. Now, a high-level canine leader with experience and skill set and finesse in training breeds like this are able to achieve this with both of these breeds, but like I say, it absolutely requires a high level of skill and a high level of experience to be able to get both of these breeds to that point of looking to you for guidance and direction at all stages. Now when we compare their exercise requirements, neither of them are necessarily extreme, but neither of them are lazy either. Both the Connie Corso and the Rhodesian Ridgeback will thrive under a lot of exercise. The Rhodesian Ridgeback more so than the Connie Corso. The Ridgeback was bred to be able to traverse extreme climates in Africa, tracking and chasing down lions, where they would then keep them at bay and allow the hunters on horseback to be able to catch up and then be able to dispatch of the prey. Now that means that still to this day they have an ability and desire to work, not to the extreme levels of a breed like a Belgian Malinois or a Border Collie for example, but I like to say that a good couple of hours of physical exercise, whether that's out for a walk, playing fetch or doing some obedience, 
obedience work can really help satiate and satisfy this breed. The Connie Corso for the Mastiffs are on a higher level. Now they're not as low level energy as say a Bull Mastiff or an English Mastiff, but they're, again, they're not as extreme as say a Rhodesian Ridgeback. For a Connie Corso, I always suggest that a good hour of exercise every day is absolutely important. And a lot of physical, not only physical, sorry, but a lot of mental stimulation is also extremely beneficial to be able to keep them calm, relaxed, with good manners in the household. So let's have a little look at the health comparisons of these two breeds. Now, large dogs are prone to having problems, especially with their joints. Being the heavier breed, the Connie Corso may be more exposed to hip and elbow dysplasia, but any responsible breeder of both breeds should check their breeding stock before producing litters. The Rhodesian Ridgeback are known to sometimes have problems with thyroid function and a variety of different eye anomalies. They can also suffer from dermoid sinus, which is a tube-like opening in the skin that can sometimes be present from birth. Now, the Connie Corso, on the other hand, can suffer from bloat, which is a deadly condition. They also suffer from types of epilepsy, demodectic mange, and then eyelid abnormalities. But if you take good care of your dogs, then both of these dogs can live a good 10 to 12 years. Now, I hope you enjoyed this quick-fire breakdown of these two absolutely incredible guardian breeds that look completely different, but like we've seen, do share some similarities. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget, if you are new here, to subscribe and turn on the notification bell, as we have got two dedicated Ridgeback videos coming to this channel every single week, and I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Ridgeback Show.